Hey guys, in this video we're going to be unboxing, configuring and reviewing the footage of this 4K bullet style security camera by Hikvision. Let's check out the specs and the footage to see if it's worth the money. This is Hikvision's 8 megapixel bullet style security camera and yes this video is in 4K so you can see the video quality that this camera offers. If you're interested in picking one of these up they cost about 450 US or 580 Canadian. You can save yourself a few bucks by picking one up on the grey market for less than half that price. Check out my video on the grey market where I share my experiences. Also I'll add a link in the description below to where I got mine. This camera supports H265+, Plus, which is the most up-to-date, high-efficiency video coding available. That means your file sizes are going to be smaller and less traffic on your network for the same great quality. It features EXIR technology, which is even distribution of IR night vision, avoiding a spotlight effect or a glow in the middle of the picture when you're shooting at night. The camera is weatherproof, so I'll have a look and see if it's rugged and tough enough to be installed in an unprotected area such as a lamp post. The camera is rated as IP67, meaning it's sealed to be used in a dusty or wet environment. It supports HD video but I hope they upgrade this soon to say that it's 4K. So there are several versions of this camera available. Looking here at the model number it ends in dash I8. This means the night vision IR lights can help you see up to 80 meters or 262 feet. But can you even see detail in the daytime at 80 meters? The Dash I5 version provides a night vision range of 50 meters or 164 feet. The Dash I8 version consumes 12.5 watts of power when the IR lights are on and the Dash I5 uses a maximum of 9.5 watts. This Dash I8 version costs about $20 more. You also have the option of selecting which lens you need. This one has a 12mm lens, but they are available from a range of a wide angle of 2.8mm all the way up to 12mm. I'll be posting another video soon demonstrating why these differences exist. Here in the box we have a user manual, a drill template with lots of holes, Actually these holes are labeled 1 and 2 depending on the bracket or conduit box you are using to install the camera. Oh, there's also a star wrench inside with the user manual and this is to adjust the position in which the camera is pointing once it's installed. Here we have a mini CD. Always download the latest version of SADP or IBMS software from the Hikvision website as you need it. There are four screws and four anchors. And yes, they're the typical cheap ones that you get with the Hikvision cameras. There's also a weather sealing grommet. The first thing you're going to notice about the camera is its weight. The shell is obviously made out of metal and has a fantastic feel to it. It weighs about 2.65 pounds or 1200 grams. The camera is just shy of a foot long or 30 centimeters. On the mount here, it's quite large, which is required to hold up such a heavy camera, but it has the word bottom written in right here and a little cutout. So if you're installing this against a wall and you need to run the cable through that opening, make sure you seal that up with a little bit of caulking so that you don't have any bugs or pests making a home inside. The wires which come out of the end here are quite thin and don't feel like they are shielded. You want to make sure that they are protected from the sun because they may rot with the elements over time and end up with some cracking. So this lead here is where you would plug in your NVR or PoE switch and obviously it does accept power over Ethernet meaning you only need to run one cable to the camera. It also has a 12 volt plug in case you do need to uh, plug it into an adapter. The adapter of course is not included. On the underside of the camera here we have a little door. Let's have a look and see what's inside. So this is where you would install an optional SD card with a capacity of up to 128 gigs for recording and playback. There is also a hard reset button here and that is used to set the camera back to factory defaults. And on top of the camera here we have a sunshade. You could loosen the screw and then adjust its position as required or you could completely remove it. It looks like the undercoating is a little bit glossy here which I'm kind of curious why they would do that because that may cause some glare back into the camera. A matte finish probably would have been better. The infrared lights they surround the lens and we'll test those out here shortly. Like I mentioned the lens has a 12 millimeter focal length and that projects images onto its 1 over 2.5 CMOS sensor capturing images at 20 frames per second 
at 8 megapixels or 4K. This camera works great with the Hikvision NVRS by simply plugging it in. No further action is required. But if you do run into trouble, check out my other videos where I plug in cameras to my NVR or I try to connect to them over my network. This camera is ONVIF compatible, meaning that it works well with ONVIF compatible NVRs. Connecting this camera to Blue Iris is also a breeze since it's listed as the known, one of the known devices in the camera's properties. So where would you install this type of camera? This is a larger bullet type camera, much larger than the typical mini bullet which I featured on this channel before. This camera screams attention which also may work in your favor if you're trying to use it as a deterrent to protect your home or business. I would install it at least 10 feet high so that it's not a target for vandalism. Given its weight, installing it onto a firm surface is critical. Uh, if you attach it to your soffit underneath your eave, that may be too flimsy, so you may want to reinforce it or put it uh, directly into a stud. Installing it onto a light pole is also a good idea, and it doesn't need to be in a sheltered location, given that it's completely weatherproof and sealed. You could also use it in a dusty warehouse and not have to worry about any dust entering inside of the camera. So let's get this configured and test it out in a few locations. Today the setup is going to be super simple. Plugging this camera into my NVR is all which is required. If you don't have a dedicated NVR, you could use Hikvision's IVMS, Blue Iris, or some other recording software. So you could also use your camera's built-in web user interface. Simply plug the camera into your PoE switch on your network and using the Hikvision's device management tool, open SADP and activate the camera with a password, then update its IP address and gateway as required. Using this new IP address, open Internet Explorer and log into the camera. Here you have access to all the camera's options. I'm going to up the quality here right away by going to Configuration, Video Audio, and on the Video tab, update video quality to highest. Here we're looking at my shed from 24 meters or 80 feet away. Remember this is a 12 millimeter zoom lens here. It has a horizontal field of view of 23 degrees. If you require a wider angle, do the math to figure out which lens you would require or check out my upcoming video on these lens calculations. Looking at the daytime footage, the quality is outstanding. I do get a little blurry as I approach the camera and hit the 12 meter or 40 feet mark because this zoom lens isn't designed for focusing on objects so close. Even when I zoom in digitally, the details are perfect. As for the nighttime, again, the quality is fantastic, but as I approach the camera, those super bright IR lights blow out the image. Let's see if we can fix that on the web user interface. If I turn on Smart Supplement Light, or what used to be called Smart IR, when I walk towards the camera, it senses that the IR lights are too bright and the camera lowers the power of these lights so the image isn't blown out. Here's a quick time lapse. You can see how amazing those colors are and those details. Quite impressive. Our next test location is in the driveway. I already have a wide angle lens covering this area, but it's not detailed enough to capture faces and license plates at the 25 meter mark or 85 feet away. I'll point the camera at the main access points to my property between these two fence posts. So the daytime image, again, it's perfect. As I approach too close to the camera, the image becomes a little blurry, but that's expected this close to a 12 mm lens. Again, the IR lights blow out the image once I hit the 9 meter marker 20 feet. With the smart supplement light on, the subject isn't as blown out. From the fence post, check out how bright the IR lights are. Next, we do the open field distance test and examine how far we could see. Here at the 80 meter mark, or 262 feet away, I'll walk towards the camera. I'll move the nighttime vision camera up a little bit because the center of the image is where the IR lights are at their strongest. The IR lights do seem to reach that far, but the 12mm lens doesn't reveal many details at that distance. At 61 meters or 200 feet, it's grainy, but not too bad. At 46 meters or 150 feet, it's much better. This seems to be a good distance where people are recognizable and license plates could be readable. At 30 meters or 100 feet, the image is much better, good quality for both daytime and nighttime use. And at 15 meters or 50 feet, the daytime looks great, but the nighttime quality isn't adjusting too well with those IR lights, unless I turn on the smart supplement lighting and it improves it a little. Using another wide angle camera, we can see how the IR lights are concentrated to stay within a narrow field of view for this 12 millimeter camera. No IR light is getting wasted here. It's supposed to be a clear night tonight, so let's get this camera set up outdoors to do some stargazing. It'll also serve as a good noise test. I'll set the camera up here pointing towards the North Star. On the web user interface, I'll turn off the IR lights. Go to Configuration, System, Maintenance, System Service, and uncheck Enable IR Lights. 
and I will slow down the shutter speed to be one third. One third is the slowest the shutter will go, but if the conditions don't require one third and require something faster, the camera will automatically speed it up to save the image from being too dark. Wow! It, this, this is incredible. Not only do I see stars that I cannot see with the naked eye, but there's, there's stuff flying by here. I'm so impressed right now, and there's hardly any noise. Now let's do a time lapse of all night. So now that the testing is done, let's talk about my likes and dislikes. I don't like how the sunshade has such a big space here inside where bugs and spiders are going to hang out and build webs. But I do like the size of it and how it protects the lens from the sun and from the snow and rain. I'm not a big fan of how difficult it is to tighten the camera into its final position using these three star screws. It seems like you need three hands to tighten them all at once so that the camera stays in the correct position. Speaking of which, there are actually little teeth inside of this pivot point right here and they keep the camera very secure when all the screws are tightened. But if you need to position the camera in such a way that you're in between some of those teeth you may need to readjust everything which is a bit of a pain in order to get the perfect position where the screws are all tightened. Another little annoyance I have is how visible the IR lights are with the naked eye. It glows quite red and it is quite noticeable from a distance. I also don't like how big my files are now when recording at 4k. My time frame of recorded history is much shorter and blue iris is that much more sluggish when dealing with large files. So those are pretty minor dislikes though there is one thing that stands out with this camera that kind of bugs me and that's the advertised IR light range of 80 meters. Now even with a 12 millimeter lens, which is the highest they have available, I still can't see many details at that 80 meter range, even in the daytime, let alone at night. So I find it a little bit misleading that the camera is advertising that it can see that far. Yes, it can, but the details just aren't there. So let's talk about why I think this camera is worth the money. I like the weight, the ruggedness, and the size of the device, and that it's totally weatherproof. I like having the flexibility in being able to choose which lens I wish to have and the maximum IR light range. I also like how you can adjust the brightness of the IR lights using the web user interface. And lastly, I love the image quality. It's a 4K camera and the picture resolution is outstanding. The daytime footage, perfect. The nighttime footage really exceeded my expectations. As long as the subject was the correct distance away from the camera given the lens that I'm using and the IR lights. I hope that you found this information helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. Once again, the links to where I got this camera are in the description below and on my blog. Thanks for watching.